Hello and welcome to another post-game edition of the Silver Bulletin. My name is Leah Jackson and with me I have Colin Gay and Wyatt Crozier. And we're here in Ohio Stadium where Ohio State just defeated Nebraska 36-31. Now this first half was not looking good on either side of the ball for the Buckeyes. Not really what fans were expecting or anticipating after a bye week. What did you guys see in this offense? What does it need to improve? Yeah, you could pretty much that sums it up is that everyone's expecting out of this bye week after a big loss to Purdue. Kind of like Iowa last year, you expect this team to rebound, have this big win against a 2-6 and six Nebraska team. It just didn't happen. A lot of things that have been issues all year kind of continued again. They did fix a lot of things. The red zone offense was a lot better. The run game was a lot better. But it was still a lot of the same issues. Um, just couldn't get a lot of stops when they needed them. The defense didn't look great. They looked a little better in some spots. But yeah, it was just not the, the statement win that a lot of people were expecting coming from a uh, loss. Yeah, I think you hit you saw improvements in a lot of areas though and i think the running game is in particular has been one of the main kind of staples in terms of storylines for the offense and they i mean talking to mike weber jk dobbins isaiah prince all these guys they're like they're happy with what they did um this is one of the best running performances they've had all season and i think i mean you saw a little bit more of that uh ideal 250 250 offense that urban meyer really likes to run um and yeah, it was a little uh, closer than people expected, especially, but this Nebraska team's on the up, and I think that's what Urban Meyer wanted to say. Uh, I know. I mean, he that's has to say he, I, it can be, but I think this is a team that, I mean, it gave them trouble at points, and they defended the pass very well. At times, Haskins overthrew. You saw a couple of dropped passes, missed opportunities, especially by Weber in terms of fumbles and um, turnovers, but you saw a team that was more balanced and was more ideal in terms of an offensive approach that they wanted to run here more in the future. Now this team kind of had the turnover bug. This team really can't afford any other setbacks on either side of the ball. Do you guys see this being an issue moving forward? You see, it was a lot of fumbles. I wouldn't say it was anything that was particularly like something they were doing. I think it was just kind of something that happened during the game. I mean, it's something that Urban Meyer continuously said over and over in the press conference. Of all the things, of all the issues the team had, it was just the turnovers that he was really driving home was the issue. It didn't help in such a close game. It could have could have turned the tides of the of Nebraska. Could have connected on some of them. But I don't know. I don't think it's a lingering issue moving forward. No, I think this. I mean, I think the success of the running game kind of outshines the the fumble problem that they had. I think. I mean, he said one of the things that Meyer said was the strip sack. Uh, that uh, Nebraska had. It was uh, at fault of the tight end. So, I mean, there was a couple of missed opportunities, misplacements in terms of scheme. But, I mean, the fumble problem, I mean, that's something they're going to drill in practice. And I'm, I'm not sure that's going to be a long-term issue for this team. Now, defensively, we didn't see the strides and improvement that probably Buckeye fans were hoping to see. Um, uh, there were still a lot of missing personnel problems. That's still a big issue for this defense, but is it more than just personnel or is it more than scheme? Will they be able to turn around in this last stretch of the season? I think it's interesting because at times during this game you saw a lot of good defensive pressure from the defensive line you haven't seen in recent games. And then other times you saw Adrian Martinez just taking over and being able to run pretty much at his will against Ohio State. So it was a little bit of both. And then for the defensive backs, yeah, it hurt to lose Jordan Fuller. Isaiah Pryor was out all game. But then you saw the like resurgence of Brendan White out of nowhere. He had 13 tackles today. He looked fantastic. So I wouldn't say it was all injuries by any means. Like, there's a lot of issues you could still say with the secondary regardless. But there were improvements in places. They still look iffy in others. It's a mixed bag for me. Yeah, I think a lot of it does have to do with personnel, especially in terms of the secondary. I mean, you mentioned, uh, well, Okuda was out as well. Um, and the loss of Jordan Fuller because of targeting uh, and Isaiah Pryor, they could not lose another safety. Brendan White stepped up, but that, I mean, that's an area of concern. That has been an area of concern. Has Brandon White kind of, or Brendan White kind of stepped up into taking that safety spot? Yes. Maybe. Yes. I, I, you say yes? Isaiah Pryor is not in that spot, and Brendan White actually played well, so yeah. So that'll be, I mean, that'll be an yeah. interesting conversation that we'll have this week. Um, but I think, I think personnel is huge. And when, or a lack of consistency in terms of personnel, it's not a matter of who, it's about, okay, it's who and how consistent can they be, or will they be in that spot long term? Because I think that's a big issue as well. Now, what would you guys, how would you guys assess the momentum for this team moving forward? They've got two more pretty big games on their schedule to end the season. Do you guys think they can pull off W's against Michigan and Michigan State? Michigan, I have to wait and see. Um, 
Not the moment. I would say not the moment. I don't think Michigan would have struggled this much against the Nebraska team. They didn't against the Nebraska team. Obviously, Nebraska has gotten better since then, but Michigan destroyed them when they played. Michigan State thinks it's going to be interesting. I think that Ohio State is the better team as opposed to Michigan State, but I think it might be closer than people expect, especially because East Lansing is a tough place to play. Michigan State's given Ohio State trouble in the past. That one's going to be interesting. Right now, I think Ohio State's got a lot to work on moving into Michigan. A lot of, I mean, they're focused on Michigan State at this point, and I think uh, the players, in turn, when bringing up kind of their assessment of today's game, they're like, oh, they did very, very well, but they have a lot to work on going into what they consider to be one of the toughest environments in the Big Ten. Uh, Michigan State has, as you said, a lot of given the team a lot of problems in the past. This is these. They have two away games before Michigan, uh, Michigan State, and then on the road at Maryland. Um, which many have viewed in the past before the Purdue game as a trap game. Um, but I think, yeah, it was you. Uh, but I think I think a lot of, I mean, they still have things to work on. I think you saw improvement, especially in terms of offensively, that could lead you to believe that that balanced offense is back. But it's going to, again, it's about consistency all across the board for this Ohio State team. And one game really can't sh tell us what's going to go. Um, against Michigan State or Maryland or even Michigan. I think it's worth I think it's worth noting that Michigan State has the number one rush defense in the nation yeah. as well. So it was big to have this game beforehand where JK Dobbins and Mike Weber can show that they've kind of made these improvements over the bye week. It'll be it'll have to see if that'll actually work against the best rush defense in the nation yeah. though. All right, that's all we have for you today. Stay tuned to see if the Buckeyes will be able to pull it off against Michigan State next week. For Colin and Wyatt, my name is Aaliyah Jackson, and thanks for watching another episode of the Silver Bulletin.